Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to this video on nucleophilic substitution reactions with ammonia. So what we're going to do is basically going to show you obviously the reaction with ammonia with a haloalkane. I'm going to explain just briefly what a nucleophile is uh, and what we mean by um, a mechanism and the curly hours that are involved as well. And we're going to go through the conditions uh, of this reaction as well because it can be quite complex. So I'm going to start with just saying what a nucleophile is. Now a nucleophile is a species with a lone pair of electrons and the word nucleophile means nucleus loving. So this is a species that will go for a uh, part of a molecule that is electron deficient. So for example the delta positive area. Um, examples of nucleophiles come in four different types that you need to know for uh, this part of chemistry. So that's water, ammonia, OH- which is hydroxide, uh, and cyanide ions as well. Obviously in this video we're going to look at the ammonia molecule. Okay, so we're going to show a mechanism. Now mechanisms will show uh, what we call curly arrows, and curly arrows show the direction of electron flow. So and curly arrows generally start either a lone pair of electrons or a bond, and it's really important that you remember that. And make sure you get the arrows the right way around as well, because it's not just showing where molecules are going, it's showing where the electrons are going from, and they have to go from somewhere where there's a lot of them, going to somewhere where it's electron deficient. So we're going to um, uh, go through this example here. This is a, an example where we've got a haloalkane and ammonia. Uh, I just want to go through the conditions first. Uh, the conditions are, uh, this uh, reaction has to be in a warm condition, uh, so just under 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, it has to be in what we call an ethanolic solvent. That just means that the ammonia is dissolved in an ethanol solution as opposed to aqueous, which is water. Uh, and also excess ammonia, which I'll come to in a minute. Okay, so we're going to start with this. Now this is uh, a bromoethane, so it's a haloalkane. And we've got our nucleophile here, which is, uh, which is ammonia. Uh, and effectively, we're going to do a substitution reaction on it. The substitution means obviously we're going to swap one molecule with another one. Now this one's a little bit different because we've got an extra step in here. It's a two-step process. And I'm going to show you both and explain what role ammonia is playing in both of them. So we're going to start with uh, drawing our delta positive and delta negative on here. You actually get a mark for this. You could get a mark for this, sorry, in the exam, but just showing it. So uh, we can see here that our, uh, we've got a halogen, and halogens are electronegative. So that means they pull electrons towards themselves in a covalent bond. Uh, and so what they do is they pull the electrons towards themselves and they give themselves a delta negative charge. Uh, obviously the electrons are being pulled away from the carbon, so the carbon is going to have a delta positive charge. So it is really useful to show that. It just shows clarity and it shows that you know what you're doing if you put them in there, even if you don't get a mark in the exam. Okay, so we're going to show uh, the curly arrow. We're going to see how this ammonia interacts. So we're going to do this in red. Important to show our lone pair on our nitrogen, and it's just sitting on the top there. And the curly arrow goes from the lone pair of electrons, because this is where the electrons are, and it's going to go to an area of electron deficiency, which is the carbon. That's what a nucleophile is. So we're going to draw our arrow going to the carbon. You have to be really specific. Make sure you're drawing it from the lone pair, going directly to the carbon. And you can't put it anywhere else. It's got to go to the carbon. Now, because this is effectively trying to bond with the carbon, Carbon's already got four bonds already, and that's all it can have uh, with it being in group four. Uh, the ammonia is trying to bond to it as well, and that's five bonds. So that's far too many. So what has to happen is a bond has to be broken um, to make way for the ammonia. The bond that's broken is the carbon-halogen bond. So electrons will go from this bond to the bromine like that. Uh, and this is the reason why is because this bond, the electrons in this bond, need to leave the carbon and uh, all the electrons are going on to the bromine, and we call this heterolytic fission. So this is breaking a bond, um, but both the electrons are going to the bromine. So we call that a heterolytic fission. Okay, so we're going to draw intermediate and see what we've got. So I'll just draw an arrow going down. So we have a hydrogen, we have a carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. Uh, and then on the end here, we have the whole NH3 molecule that's bonded onto it. Now, this is going to pose a problem because actually we've got a nitrogen here uh, and the nitrogen will have a positive charge because the nitrogen can only really bond three times. That's all it can do. But now it's been bonded four times 
uh, its electrons have been spread over, um, uh, well, too many of its electrons have been taken away from nitrogen, so it's left with a positive charge. Now, this is very unstable, and we're going to work out see what happens after that as well. Uh, we do also form a Br minus, which I'll put over here. Okay, right. Now, obviously, we can't just leave this, um, and this is the first step, is the ammonia is acting as a nucleophile in the first step, so this is step one. But it's step two, which I'm going to use this molecule, start off step two, uh, the, we need another ammonia molecule, uh, and this time it's going to act as a base. So we don't just need one, we need two. So we're going to draw another ammonia molecule in here, which is NH3, uh, and this time it's going to act as a base. Now, Bronsted Lowry bases, uh, as you may or may not know, uh, bases are proton acceptors. So an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. So this is no longer going to go for an electron deficient area because it's acting as a base. So what it is going to do is it's going to react with a proton. Now we've also got this unstable nitrogen in the middle. So it's this really clever thing that happens here. So the electrons which are on the nitrogen, are going to go for a proton, and it's going to go for that proton there. It's not going for the delta positive nitrogen in the middle. There isn't enough space for it to react there. So it's going to go for the hydrogen, and then obviously this is forming a bond with the hydrogen. Hydrogen can only bond once, so therefore this bond has to break, uh, and the electrons in this bond are going to go into that nitrogen to stabilize that positive charge. So effectively, we're cancelling out the charge. It's positive in the nitrogen. We're pushing negative electrons in there. So that's going to turn it back into a neutral nitrogen minus the hydrogen that was on there. So the products we're going to form is this. So we're going to form, obviously, we'll have our two carbons because this bit hasn't been touched. So we'll leave that there. Uh, and then we've got our nitrogen. But what we have now is two hydrogens. Because that this third hydrogen now belongs to this. So we have NH4 plus, because this hydrogen now belongs to this, and we have a positive charge there. Now this and this will then react together. So these two will form something called ammonium bromide, NH4Br, and that's soluble, so that will dissolve in solution, so you wouldn't see anything there. So there's our product there. But it is really important that actually the ammonia is acting as a nucleophile in this step because it's going for delta positive carbon and kicking off the bromine. And then in this step, the second step, it's acting as a base because it's going for the proton and then it's stabilizing that nitrogen there. So it's actually a double, uh, a double uh, nitrogen, a double ammonia uh, reaction. So overall, what's happening? So we've got... Again, if we write down our reaction here, so we've got C2H5Br, and that's going to react with two lots of ammonia, which is NH3. Uh, and then what we are making is this, which is C2H5NH2, so which is this molecule here, plus... NH4 Br. So you can see that we have an excess of ammonia. When we have more, when we have a molar ratio where we need uh, more than one compared to the other molecules, for example, we've got two for every one of them, we say that we need excess ammonia for this reaction to happen. If we didn't do, didn't have excess ammonia, this reaction wouldn't occur. So it's really important that you know what we mean by the word excess. This reaction is quite complex. There's a lot of steps. You've got to make sure you've got everything right. Make sure the arrows are pointing to the right direction. They're going to the right place. And make sure, especially with the ammonia one, that uh, you're showing the two steps clearly. And you know that one is a nucleophile. And then the ammonia acts as a base in the second step. That's it. Hope it helps. Bye.